Hello, everybody. I'm John Waddelton, CTO of Foundry. Uh, some of you may have heard of us. Um, a lot of you probably haven't. We work in the background. We work on the intersection of art and technology. Our software, combined with the creative genius of our customers, has helped produce some of the most amazing visuals ever put to screen. Here are some examples. So, screens, screens, screens. Screens are everywhere. In fact, I've got a screen on me right now. It's the first thing I look at when I wake up in the morning. It's the last thing I look at before I go to sleep. So, some stats for you. A, a recent survey I read from Coms, Comsec said, Comscore rather, said that on average, Americans spend two hours, 51 minutes a day looking at a mobile device. Two hours, 51. Another survey from Nielsen said that on average, Americans spend 10 hours a day watching some kind of media, mostly on a screen. So screens, they're everywhere. We spend a lot of time looking at them. And it's not just looking at them. We spend a lot of time creating content for them. How many of you out there spend your time on Facebook making a digital version of your life that you show to others who look at it on their screens? How many of you wait to get that perfect shot that you're going to post on Instagram, again, for the screen? So how can I be saying, after all of this, it's the end of the screen, this is madness? Everybody loves screens, don't they? Well, if we're to believe all of these kind of financial predictions out there, then AR and VR is coming at some point. Another, this is my last stat, another uh, report that I read said that, IDC report, said that 2020, the AR, VR combined market will be 162 billion. 162 billion. Put that into perspective, in 2016, it was 5.2 billion. So that is huge. So these things are coming. And what does it really mean to it? Why is that the end of the screen, AR and VR? Well, what it means is that screen, that portal that you used to look on the world, is suddenly being broken. In VR, for instance, instead of looking at something from a distance, a fantasy world through a window, you go through the window and you become part of that world. You're embedded in it, not looking at it through a portal. And AR is the reverse. Instead of that portal having your favorite characters in there, those characters smash through the screen, they come into your lives. So that screen is getting dissolved. So why is that anyway? Why do we want this drive towards realism and embedding in these kind of virtual worlds. And there's a long history of it, actually. This guy is uh, Louis Degas, invented the first commercial camera, the Daguerreotype. I have to be careful not to mispronounce that. And that kind of started the history of this drive for realism. When people first saw one of these photographs, they were amazed. They thought it was magic. Some people thought it was the work of the devil and that the subject's soul had been captured into the photograph because it was so real. 
But that wasn't enough for people. They, they loved the photographs, but we wanted more. So we added multiple photographs, playing them in succession, giving the illusion of movement. That's what we call cinema now. We added sound, increasing that level of presence, feeling that you're there. And we added color. And recently, we added silly glasses where you can see 3D movies. And VR and, and AR are really continuing that tradition of making things look more real, stuff that we as consumers are coming to expect. So it's a super interesting journey that we're going on, but really we're at the start of this. We're really at a 1.0 of, of film, a bit like uh, of VR, rather, a bit like what's des described by this character here, the, the kind of the 1.0 of cinema would have been this. And when you look at cinema or the visual effects that you saw earlier, and, and indeed, internet technologies at Web Summit here, you could think of us at an 8.0 or some high version number, right? It's been through lots of generations to get to the places that we are at the moment. But VR and AR is on at the start of this journey, and there's a lot of hurdles to be overcome. And we're helping, uh, together with the creators that we speak to, to try and create technical solutions to solve the problems that are ahead. So one way to solve these problems of AR and VR making the content is just to make a digital version of everything. So just make a digital version of the world, have digital people walking around, digital characters, and then it's easy. You just step into the digital world in VR and you walk around, go wherever you, wherever you like. Same with AR, digital characters. They can just be rendered on your mobile device or HoloLens or whatever, it's fine. And this is an example of a digital character. It looks really good. You know, it's probably seen Rogue One as well, the state-of-the-art digital character at the end there, Princess Leia brought back to life. Looks good. But I would question whether it's 100% believable yet. We're kind of getting there. And d definitely in a few years, I think we will be there. But it's a bit of a journey. And the other thing that people need to be aware of, making this sort of stuff is really, really hard. So to make a character like that would have been lots of artists busily painting skin, lots of texture people creating the look, lots of people creating the model. And then lots of technicians doing the capture of the motion capture of an actor's face to translate onto this model. And then lots of hand animators at the end tweaking the look of the face to make it look realistic. So all of that is a lot of work, which means it's super expensive to do such a thing. So ideally, we'd want everything computer generated, but it's not there yet. So what else can we do? Well, we can do the old fashioned thing, back to what we said before. Just capture the world. Why can't we use a camera? And that's, in fact, what people have been doing. People create VR with cameras. They have them pointing in all directions, looking up and down, all around. And then they can create a VR experience called 360 video from a central place. And you can have depth. You can have stereo, just like you would do when you see a stereo movie. The problem with it, though, is that camera is from one fixed position. So everything looks fantastic as long as you don't move. If you, want, if you want to walk around, the camera didn't walk around. The camera is still facing in one direction. So that won't work. If you want to look around a character, you can't because you've only got one viewpoint. So this is a big barrier that us, uh, people like Lightro, uh, Microsoft are trying to solve with something called volumetric video uh, or light field technology. And I'll give an example of the sorts of things that we're doing in this field right now. So this is a test shoot that we did um, to kind of overcome this barrier. And the trick is with the volumetric video is instead of having one camera for capture, you just make lots of cameras. And the lots of cameras means you get a bigger field of view. And that field of view, multiple images, allows you to have a lot of movement when you're inside the VR experience to move around. It's not going to give you enough to walk around the entire world, but it'll give you enough to be able to move within the box that you captured. So here's an example. We've got some characters there captured by our multi-camera array. It allows us to do technical stuff like pull depth out, create meshes out of it, and then finally take those characters and put them into a fully synthetic environment. Now, the environment is not that hard to create because you know, it's not moving around. Character is very hard to create. In this technique, we can just film the characters, put them into that fully CG world. This is our compositing software, Nuke, uh, doing the, the combination of the real and the unreal until you get our characters color corrected and properly sitting inside those scenes. And then we can deploy it to a game engine, can put in your uh, glasses and see those characters. 
So as I said before, a lot of people working on this technology, and we really believe in this as the future of capture. Not just one camera, not just one point of view, but multiple points of view so that you can have that movement, so you can look around a character rather than just sit in one specific place. So what about augmented reality? I mean, what is augmented reality anyway? So there's a few different kind of versions of it. One is like, OK, we're going to look through, through a, a, a mobile device and see uh, things overlaid on it. Some might call it mixed reality, the uh, mixture of the real and the unreal together. Some versions are like HoloLens. You put on like a helmet, and you can see uh, CG things superimposed on the real world. And some things may be coming in the future. There's rumors about different kind of displays that maybe beam things into your eyeballs. Who knows what? To kind of give the illusion of space, light fields, something incredible like that. I hope it happens. But there are challenges here as well. AR and uh, Kit and um, AR Core from, from Android have given us some great technology, uh, but it still has challenges. And what we wanted to do is make the CG look as realistic as possible. And we're working on a project here together with Industrial Light and Magic to do just that. So here's a character. He's called creatively uh, J Alien. Um, I think it stands for Jakku Alien. I don't know why he doesn't have a better name. It's a Star Wars-esque character. Um, and he's a film asset that uh, could be used in a feature film. And what we wanted to do is put, put him basically in our office at Foundry in London. So what we did is we started by scanning the environment a little bit. And what this does is allows us to get a sense of the space, allows us to find out where the furniture is, find out where the regions where our alien needs to be cut off are, uh, look at the lighting that's in the room. And then we have a technique we call um, hallucinating lighting, which is a great word. And it's using AR and machine learning to work out where all the lights are in the scene, given some stills. And this is really important, because for instance, my shadow, it's casting this way, it's casting that way. In a different room, it would be casting a different way. So it's important to get that look, to make it look realistic. And then finally, we can combine those things together to give this sort of look. This is not the finished version at the moment. As you can see, there's kind of uh, geometry in there. But this is the kind of look we can get. The character looks realistic, the shadows look realistic, and we have this kind of motion blur, and the sorts of things you'd expect in cinema, but now right there in your own space. So the last thing I want to talk about is not just the end of the screen for consumption for media, but the end of the screen for content creation itself. So here's an example of where VR has been used in film. And it's been used for years, actually. Back on Avatar, they used to do this, this kind of technique. It's called virtual production. And the point of it is that a director, when they're watching a film, they watch the film, and usually the effects get done six months later, and it'll be six months later before they see the final shot. That's not great for creative vision. You want to see it on set while you're doing it. So we can use these sorts of techniques, similar to AR, where we can on the fly show the director, when they're looking through the viewfinder, what it's going to look like when it finally goes to screen. Now, why I'm showing this is because this is not VR content. This is using VR and AR to make regular screen or regular movies. I think that's the important distinction. And I think when we get to 3D content, VR is, and AR are really going to enable creation of 3D content. Because as I said right at the beginning, making 3D content is really, really hard. And the reason it's hard is because you need to look through a screen. And the 3D is a world where you can work around the three dimensions. So this is the final thing I want to show you, which is our content creation tool for 3D called Modo. And what we've done is we've added VR directly into the 3D content creation tool. And what's really fantastic about this is instead of looking at a screen, trying to judge how big a thing is, you just put the headset in, you immediately can see it as if you're in the real world. Or if you wanted to do something in 3D, like draw in 3D space, you can do it directly inside 3D, not having to do it on a screen, which is a version of 3D. And I really think this is the future of content creation. This is the future of making it easy. And the reason why is, I'll give you an example. You know if you've, you show a child or give a child um, a tablet or, a, or an iPhone, and you teach them to pinch, zoom, and, and kind of zoom around, and you know they get it pretty much straight away. That's because it's very physical, and it matches what you're doing. VR is going to give that content creation to younger generation, I think, because they'll be able to step inside that 3D world and understand it immediately, not have to have years of training to be able to create. So that about wraps it up. It's 
the end of the screen or the beginning of the end of the screen. We're breaking out of the screen. We're breaking into the screen. And we're going to break out of the screen to create 3D content. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time.